So I'll tell you what prompted this video. After the release of my Empire vs. Federation, in other words, sort of a Star Wars vs. Star Trek crossover scenario video, of course the comments continued and continued and continued, debates between Star Wars fans and Star Trek fans. The Star Trek fans were a little miffed by how I portrayed Star Wars lasers. Basically, they pointed out that the lasers in Star Trek are obsolete. In the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, The Outrageous Okana, a ship locks lasers onto the Enterprise. Picard and Riker scoff and say lasers, those can't even penetrate our navigational deflector. So it would seem, in spite of the Borg cutting laser and Q-Who, that most of the lasers in Star Trek are incapable of damaging a Starfleet starship. Based on the popularity of this argument, I decided it'd be a good idea to explain what Star Wars lasers actually are. First, these are not lasers. We know this simply because a real laser is a beam of light or radiation. It travels at 186,000 miles per second. The bolts from these weapons in Star Wars do not do that. It has long been established, and now confirmed in current canon, the Star Wars lasers use a different science than the lasers we are familiar with. They basically are firing a bolt of compressed plasma, or superheated gas. Plasma in the real world can be hotter than the core of the sun. However, it's not that cohesive. Gas dissipates quickly, so it cannot have the range, at least in our universe, that weapons in Star Wars apparently have. Star Wars solves this problem with a very convenient exotic substance called Tabana gas. Tabana gas has two special properties. First, it can be compressed at the atomic level, or spin sealed. It also becomes up to four times as potent when passed through a strong light source, such as a laser, and perhaps that is why, in the Star Wars universe, they are called lasers, even though they aren't actually lasers. They are passed through a laser pilot to retain the energy that they apparently carry. So here is theoretically how it would work. We'll demonstrate the process using the laser on this Imperial Starwing class assault gunboat. Tabana gas is first loaded from storage into an ionization chamber. It's ionized with high-powered electrodes and becomes a superheated plasma. It is then spin sealed into a cohesive bolt using electromagnetic fields. This gives it more mass and density than a pure gas, meaning it could utilize some kinetic energy. The bolt is passed through a laser pilot to increase the energy output. The bolt is then accelerated by electromagnetic coils in the barrels and is shot from the cannon. The range of such a weapon is adequate to hit targets several dozens of kilometers away. I would dare to speculate on the physical properties of Tabana gas. Every time I try to research how a gas could carry the properties of light, much less be compressed at the atomic level, my head begins to explode. This is not altogether outside the realm of science, however. The potency of such weapon would depend on the level of the charge in the plasma, the amount of compression, the intensity of the laser pilot, and the speed it can be accelerated out of the barrel. If such a weapon was properly engineered, there is no doubt it could melt most objects to slag. Right, thanks everyone for watching. I just wanted to express my thanks for all the comments in the previous videos, both good and bad. I appreciate all the feedback. There is much more to come. Please subscribe, like, comment. I do have a Patreon page. You'll find that linked in the description. The next project I plan to present an animation of the Starwing class assault gunboat, and Thrawn will have a few things to say about it. Peace out.